Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Good Leader Podcast. Today, this is a mid-year check-in. If you're listening to this uh, when it goes live, we are presumably, it's in the middle of July. It's summertime, and we may be approaching August, but I, I think of like all of summer as mid-year. I don't know about y'all, but some, it's like end of May to beginning of August. That's the middle of the year for me. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, smack in the middle, you know, is the yeah. end of June or whatever, but it's like- Kind of like middle age. It's, it's kind of like middle age. So as, you know, April and May, you're approaching- <laughs> Yeah. You're approaching summer slash the middle, and then afterward, you're you're the end of the year. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so I- <laughs> We're here, so wherever you're listening to this, and, and it can be the doldrums of summer in some ways. It depends on your organization. It depends on your um, your workload and your sales cycle and all those different things. But for us, it's interesting because for us, we have our busiest time of the year in some ways and our slowest time of the year in some ways, depending yeah. on your specific job. Yeah. You're either on a ton of events. We work with, Paradigm Shift works with educational groups all across the country, and so people can be all over the place. We've got, any given day, we have like 40 to 50 staff members on an event somewhere, somewhere in the globe. But then for other team members, like, well, I'm in the office today. Everyone's gone. It's pretty slow around here. I'm caught up on all of my work in my role. And so it's this interesting, yeah. it's this interesting thing for us. So I happen to live on both sides of that aisle. Like, so any given week then during the middle of the year, I either feel like, man, this is crazy busy or wow, nobody's here. This is slow. Yeah. Um, what do I do? I can get caught. So it got me thinking about a mid-year check-in and I wanted to get your, I, I'm workshopping this. I'm really, in, as you can tell, I'm workshop mode. I've been workshopping the 21st century skills. Uh, we've been doing, you know, rapid fire resources. I'm workshopping a lot of things. So I guess this is just summer is my workshop time. And you two right. are my, uh, you know, you're in uh, the workshop. You're the elves. We're the guinea pigs. I like elves. You're okay, helping. Okay. You know, always be cobbling. So <laughs> here we go. I'm going to give you three questions to ask then for your mid-year check-in. Now, this is anyone, any level, anywhere. How am I doing mid-year? Mid-year check-in in life, in work, all those types of things. Okay, number one, how are you doing on your goals? That's the first question. I know it sounds super obvious, but to me, it's the middle of the year. How are you doing on your goals? Most of us set like New Year's resolutions. We have these goals at the beginning of the year, and many of them have an annual framework to them. It's like, well, this year I want to accomplish this thing. I want to get this done this year, either personally or professionally. Um, many of us then have benchmarks through the quarters, but there is this midpoint just to ask yourself, how are you doing on your goals? Mm -hmm. And often I think people just set it and forget it. Like, oh, yeah. you know, I just said totally. that at the beginning of the year. Maybe I stick with it the first couple of weeks. Now forget, I'm guilty of this, like, mm -hmm. especially on personal stuff. I've got some things like, oh, I want to, I really want to do this. I really mm -hmm. want to do that. Get this done this year. And it's like, okay, well, what, where yeah. are we with those? So that's the first question. How are you doing on your goals? That's interesting that you asked this. Oh. Because, I mean, not to just throw our whole team under the bus, okay. myself included, okay. All and right. my own leadership probably, but I've been in a couple annual check-ins yeah. you know, recently with our team comes kind of the time of year we do that. And um, one of the questions is kind of what we're going to sit around this, like, what are, you know, how are you doing on your goals? They set in March, uh, October, a couple different times of the year, they set specific, like, uh, maybe half their six month goals, basically. Okay. Okay. Six month goals. The majority of them <laughs> couldn't even tell me what their goals were. They're like, do you actually have them in front of you? Could you, uh, could you remind me what, as like, well, that tells me how you're doing. It tells on them. a lot. Yeah, that's all I needed to know. <laughs> if I have to read them to you, we're obviously not getting very far. <laughs> so one of my new goals uh, for our and our executive assistant is helping me with is um, we are now, Jared had a great idea at the end of last year, we had gone through Strength Finder kind of like course all together. And so we got everyone's strengths framed and, and just kind of put on their desk. That's right, Train. And uh, they're ag agonizing. It's the idea here. train. It's the idea train coming through it right is. here. It is. And so uh, that was a great idea. So I was like, well, we definitely remember our strengths. Because even when I asked, like, you know, Jess, what, what was your second strength? Look right at them. Okay, easy there it to is. remember. So we are now doing that with, with six-month goals. Is They are going to be right there in plain view. We're going to frame them. And um, it's going to be a really clear, I am not doing this, or I am doing this, or I am working towards it thing. So... Little little shout out, little hilarious note to our team there. That is one of the goals that I set that that has not been hit is helping others achieve their goals. Okay, <laughs> all right. But for my personal goals, uh, actually not doing too bad, honestly. 
Okay. I'm thinking about the goals I set with you uh, maybe in yep. in March or so. That was a hard time of our lives. Um, but we've come a, a long way, I'm thinking, oh, yeah. um, organizationally. There's a few little things, but, you know, I, I would say I'm kind of right where I need to be with them if you're asking how I'm doing on my goals. Well, I told you even before the podcast in the pre-production meeting that I, I was going to throw this – these questions at you, but I did not expect you to answer them. So my question, the, the oh, point well, of the podcast we is not. Oh, I thought we were literally supposed to say, here I am. No, but just, you did it. You took off. I didn't want to stop her. Let me hear her. I was like, well, I don't want to stop you. No, my I, I actually wanted your opinion on what do you think about that question yeah. in a mid-year check-in, not answer the question. But you answered the question. Uh, that was great. Yeah, I did. It was a good uh, I also, I, role play. I also love that question <laughs> because what I found with our team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's really are insightful these for things. me. And so, yeah, so don't worry, Jared. We're doing a great job over here. Well, um, I also, I've I worked, like it. I have worked in leadership development for a good portion of my life. And that's not uncommon. I see it all the time. That's, mm-hmm. why, that's why the question is a mid-year check-in. So many of us, even, even as accomplishers, even if you're an achiever, even if you are doing well in your job, the mid-year check-in is an opportunity to literally check in on your goals. That's why it's the first question. It sounds so silly and obvious, but it's like, well, yeah, but how many people don't do it? Right. Like you might set yeah. new goals. Right. You might, the people do that a lot. Instead of checking in on a goal, they just go, well, I got to set some goals for the second mm-hmm. half of the year. Well, how did we do on the first half? Yeah. And the reason that's important is not necessarily to grade yourself so harshly if you're not succeeding, but it's to remind yourself of the reason you set it in the first place and go, are we still there? So it's okay to revise the goal, but so many times like, well, that's not even, so I would encourage us and just, and this isn't a goal setting podcast, but where I'm coming from is I'm, I'm in the same boat thinking I need fewer goals, fewer goals, more impactful yeah. on a personal level and a professional level, fewer goals, yeah. more impactful, put it in front of you. You're, you're saying it with like actually literally printing it off, putting it here in a frame, whatever your daily reminders are. But that's where the, that's where a mid-year check-in can help you go. Well, I still want to accomplish that goal. That is still important to me. Yeah. Chances are it is still accomplishable. You right. know, maybe your goal is like to read every week. Well, that's not accomplishable, sure. but you can read, you can continue to read. But many of us, especially if you set a goal of like read five books or do this thing on think of personal stuff or, you know, um, spending quality time with your partner, whatever it is, it was important to you six months ago. It's probably still important. It's okay to revise it. But man, remind yourself of that and then don't give up on that goal. I think many times yep. we just start, start from scratch or start over and go, ah, well, no, 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 no. And you are robbing yourself when you don't do the mid-year check-in. You're robbing yourself of the gift of persistence. Yeah. Yep. And don't do that. Give yourself like, you know what? Maybe I do need, like I said, to edit and revise, but I could still do something with this goal. Um, so that's, that's the first mid-year check-in. How are you doing on your goals? It really then, even maybe more powerful, and this was not the intention of the question, but maybe more powerful as we've talked this out of how you're doing on your goals is, well, what are your goal setting habits? Do you have them in front of you? Like, right. well, okay, if you ask yourself, if you do a mid-year check-in and you say, how am I doing on goals? I don't even remember what I put. Yeah, I don't right. even remember what I said. Well, there's a, um, a board at HQ. I don't remember the exact phrase, but it, uh, y'all might remember it. It's something along the lines of what you schedule is what you value. Yep. What, yes. Is that how it goes? Show me your calendar and you show me your values. Exactly. So when, when you ask this question, I'm thinking, the things that I have as goals, am I putting them in my week? So you said daily yep. reminders. So that yep. would be a good maybe follow up or caveat to yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And the other two questions are, are going to be along those lines of calendar and um, it's really calendar and budget. <laughs> those that's the question I ask people all the time, especially it, 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 personally, just as much as professionally. What do you spend your time on? And I don't mean like guesstimating what your time is like literally show your calendar yeah what what is worthy of giving an appointment that's why i um just as i'm just throwing out little nuggets here today i guess but w- my um auto reply on text messages you know when you get a call you can click a yeah. text message auto reply mm-hmm. i created one that says i'm sorry i'm in a meeting i'll call you back as soon as possible mm-hmm. anytime i'm doing anything i call the meeting and here's mm-hmm. why i learned this I, I this was when my kids when adelaide and jocelyn were probably like four and two I recognize this interesting phenomenon. We have this weird paradox in society where yeah. we say we value parenting and time with your family <laughs> in the business world. But then if you prioritize that, you're subconsciously or in subtle ways looked down upon, mm-hmm. yep. you know, or like if I, so yep. my point is even with our team and, and other professionals and clients, people we're working with, if I said, hey, it's, it's 8.30 and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm with my kids right now. I can't talk. Well, yep. yeah, you can. 
Okay, yeah, well, then they continue to ask the question. Yeah. The, but if I said, I'm sorry, I'm in a meeting, I'll get back with you as soon as possible. Yeah. Oh, no problem. No problem. It's not in a rush. Mm -hmm. uh, even sometimes it's like, no problem. I can ask Anch. <laughs> no problem. I can figure it out. No That's problem. So, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Just by calling it a meeting. Mm -hmm. So if I have my, like, if I'm planning on spending time on my personal spiritual development in mm -hmm. prayer, I'm like, That's a meeting. It's a meeting. If I am going to be hanging out with Adelaide and Jocelyn, it's a meeting. Yep. Yeah. Full disclosure, tomorrow, I know I'm going to be done at noon, Ange, because that's a meeting with Adelaide and Jocelyn, 9 to noon. It's on my calendar. Yeah. It looks, it, it's disguised as work. Ange was like, she respected that boundary. She's like, are you going to be done by noon? Yes, I'll be done. But if I put it like that, yep. it, it sets boundaries for people yeah. respect it. And so going to your point of your calendar, your goals. Yep. So then if you do it mid-year check-in and you do have some personal goals with family, I will encourage you, especially if you're success, not even successful, but if you are an, uh, an invested employer or employee, if you are caring about your job in today's business world, especially a job that does not have a hardcore nine to five shutoff, like you have the ability and often expectation to answer texts, questions, emails after hours, then you can set harder boundaries with your calendar mm -hmm. just by yeah. doing those things. Or it so. can and should. Yeah, I would say I absolutely. Yeah. yeah, if you're going to achieve your goals, if your goal is like I want to spend more time with my kids, great, worthy goal. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. How are you going to do it? You have to do it first. Like put them in your calendar yeah. first. Not oh man, because the mid year check in, you go wow, I really haven't shifted anything. What should shift? Yeah. Show me your calendar. I'll show you your values and what is actually literally written in your calendar. Are they in your calendar? There's some wisdom we can squeeze out of that as well. I think young as long, young leaders, I know I've done this. We set goals that are too big that that our calendar can't even hold those. So then we get to the six month check-in. I'm like, crap, I didn't do any of those goals. Well, I probably should have used a little more wisdom on how I should even set goals to begin with. So We yeah. overestimate what we can do in a week and underestimate what we can do in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. And when it comes to goal setting, we have this mindset. We're like, okay, this year I'm gonna change everything. Yeah. And it's like, and that's why I love the book Atomic Habits because it is about these small changes, atomic, atom, small levels of changes over time. It's a 1% increase. Well, instead of being like, you know, gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds this year. Well, maybe, maybe not. And if you did, good for you. That's awesome. But if you wanna be healthier, instead of like, I wanna have a healthier lifestyle. If I lost five pounds per year for 10 years, I've lost 50 pounds. And 10 years from now, do I wanna be 50 pounds lighter? Yes. Could I use, you know, say, and that's why I say we underestimate what we can do in 10 years. And so that's why it's, it's these smaller, more lifestyle changes, but you gotta have the check-in. Mm -hmm. like, like, so whatever your style is, the mid-year check-in is about asking yourself those things, having the fewer goals, the daily reminders, that's revising good. them, moving forward. And you even learn in the moment, like, wow, don't wait until next year to set the same goal again. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, what do I need to revise today? Which is my second question. What will you regret not doing six months from now. Hmm. So it's not necessarily goal-based. Mm -hmm. This maybe lends more to like even the lifestyle questions or maybe more the, the um, habit changes or hmm. you know, starting something. Like what will you regret not doing six months from now? I think that is an awesome mid-year check-in because it's yeah. like, okay, even if I can't achieve this goal, even if I can't, if, you know, that ship has sailed or this, this is gone, that time has passed. What will I regret doing? It's, it's a little bit of a play, a, like a mental trick to me that instead of saying, what do you want to do? It's just thinking like six months from now, I will really regret it if I don't do this, mm -hmm. if I don't take a moment to do this. All mm -hmm. right, what are your thoughts on that question? Once again, Anj, you don't have to unpack the question in its entirety. <laughs> Unless you want to, you can tell us. You can tell us what you would regret it, in six yeah. months if you want to. We're here for you. <laughs> We're here for you, and we are here for the answer. But I don't have anything about our team on this one. Well, so. but once again, this this is just a check in, though. Personally, you, this is gonna be totally personal. This, this is your mid year check in. Sure. Yeah. The Good Leader Podcast, man, you've got one life to live. You're gonna have a lot of jobs. So take care of your life. Take care of your family. Take care of yourself. Take care of your soul. You're gonna get me preaching, Lemuel, yeah. over here. But the, what do you regret? It doesn't have to be a professional. This is not a professional check in. This is an all things check in. Right. Well, I like the question because I think it shifts the the focus on what the purpose of the goal is almost makes it more urgent because we we can set goals just to set them. Yeah, but totally. There might be some I don't regret. So it, it would help me as a, someone answering it um, focus on, okay, what goals do I have that are actually important? 
to me. I guess. Absolutely. And, and that's why I say this one to me helps lend it more toward the lifestyle and maybe more of those atomic habits. And maybe this is just my interpretation of it. But when I, I keep telling myself, I need to be healthier, I need to work out more. I keep telling myself that. So I set this, these annual goals. Like I'm going to work out four times a week. I'm going to do this. I don't often really set like I'm going to lose a certain amount of weight goal because that's not really what I care about. I, if I lose weight as a byproduct, that's fine. But I really, I just know I need to work out. The results take care of themselves. But even then, I'm still failing. If I do this mid-year check-in, if I put myself on the altar here and I go, well, how are you doing on your, my workout goals? <laughs> Terrible. Um, better than last year, but still not where I want to be. But then if I frame it with the second question, what will you regret not doing six months from now? It's like, well, shoot, even if I actually just start walking a little more, mm -hmm. running maybe with Lemuel over there, um, if I running start, with the basketball. like I will regret not doing anything, which inspires me to do something. Like right. even if it's not like, okay, I'm not going to set the world on fire with this goal, but I will regret if I don't do any working out. Mm. But if I just do a little bit, I'll feel better about myself. And I'll be like, okay, I'm on the path. That's good. So, so that's the twist for me. But that's the question. So I remember, like this is the mid-year check-in. Ask yourselves these questions. Um, that would also, um, especially now, I mean, I'm at the age where and it, all of us have lost people. But I think relationships then, that helps, um, that helps us, I think, and maybe this is just me. Maybe this is just my mindset that I'm often the type that I, I all too often wait for like the perfect moment or I wait for like, you know, like, well, I'm traveling a lot and well, I don't really, you know, let's go see grandma. And it's like, well, I can only run over there for five minutes. Let's, you know, and then I'll put it off where it's like, no, let's go have a good visit. You yeah. know, I don't just want to like do a drive by and be like, hey, I'm here for five minutes and then I got to go. Yep. But now I'm like, now that they're gone, now that all my grandparents are gone, I'm like, man, I should have, what do I regret doing? It's actually, I regret like, why didn't I just swing by her house on my way home more often? And even if it was five minutes, like sure. just, hey, it's five minutes. I can't, I literally can't stay long. Uh, yeah. I got to go to work, but I can give you a hug. I can give you a kiss yeah. and I can go on. Instead, I, I, I was too grandiose, which is kind of the goal setting question, too much like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, spend more time with my mm -hmm. grandparents. I'm going to spend more time with these people that I care about. Instead, the second question of regretting six months from now, I'm going to regret these small moments, these, mm. these little microcosm actions. Yep. So- I love it. Okay, last question. You're going to like this one, Ansh. You're going to like this one. Okay. okay? You might. I, I like them I have, a feeling, I have a feeling you're going to really like it, and you're probably going to want to tinker with it. You're going to want to change it a little bit. You're going to want to go, well, I like the heart behind it. I like the intention. Uh-huh. And then you're going to go, but I, I'd phrase it. I'd probably phrase it like this. this so. Okay, okay, what is it? All right. Who gets your time right now? This is a six-month check-in. Who... Who, or maybe a better phraseology is, who is getting your time right now? Who gets your time right now? Who is getting your time right now? Not like you, right now, like in this moment, like in, in this conversation? In, I'd say this year. This is a, a mid-year check-in. So let's say this year. Look over the last two or three months. Look over this year. Who is getting your time? Meaning, and I'm phrasing that because not who you want to get your time. This isn't the priority question. This isn't who you want. This is, and I'm actually being super, super duper ridiculously practical with it. And I'm thinking of like, if I list out the five people or five groups of people, like who is getting my time and what, what am I devoting that time to? Who? And is, would I, is that the priority list? Hmm. So in other words, let me give you a couple of examples. And you sure. can say, oh, I don't like it. Once again, I think you're going to like it, but you're <laughs> going to want to tinker with it. And in all fairness, you might come up with a better way to say it. If I just take a work example. If I literally say, who is getting my time at work? It just, it, it, might, it might help to compartmentalize it. Who gets the most of your time at work? Do you have an answer? At work? Yeah. Who gets the most of your time? Uh, <laughs> I mean, there is an answer. Let me put it this way. <laughs> it depends on the day, but there is an answer. There is an answer. And it might not be the same. It's not going to be the same answer every day. It's not going to be the same answer every season. Sure. But if you, like I said, the same answer. I mean, I have my answer. Any you probably have yours. Do you have your, your answer? Who gets the most of your time? Ooh, I have I have about three. Can it be okay. more than one or does that you have to can. be? No, it can. I said it could be a group. It could be a group. It could be, like, like you might say sales department gets the most of my time. Or you might say HR gets the most of my time. That would be fair. This is your mid-year check-in. those. This is your mid-year check-in. The intent, the, the, the reason behind this is because we often talk about leadership influence as time and with people and whom, and proactively I might say, man, 
I need to invest in this person or this group of people or this thing. Mm -hmm. But if I'm asking mid-year check-in, I'm actually not doing it. Sure. Like there might be a group that you go, I don't spend much time with that person or those people because they're on autopilot. They're doing a good job. I might check in with them. They're great. But man, if I invested more time in them, mm -hmm. that would be an uber productive group. Mm -hmm. That would help me achieve our professional goals more. But I don't spend time with them because I don't have to. Mm -hmm. It's just, like I said, it's a mid-year check-in to go, am I doing the things that I want to do? And the time we spend with people is a huge component to that. Mm -hmm. If you answer the question then, and if you're honest about the question, and once again, I'm just saying the first part is not a priority list. It's just literally ask yourself. And then if you go, because then if it's like, well, I want to spend more time at home with my kids. Do you? Well, who's getting your time right now? Who are you spending time with right now? You might even find that that answers me. Actually, I'm pretty selfish. Actually, I, I actually do golf a lot. I actually do watch quite a bit of Netflix. Actually, I do. Actually, <laughs> I am my worst enemy here. I'm kind of complaining about work, but if I say who is getting more of your time, it's wasted. I am wasting a lot of time. Yeah. On the work example, if I think of a name or a group, well, then the follow-up on this mid-year check would have to be, is that who you want? Mm -hmm. Is that the most productive? Is that the best way? Is that, the, is, that the, is that align with the goals that you have in place, with the overall productivity? Or do you think, wow, I have not set strong enough boundaries and that person is consuming my time. I need to change that boundary. That person should, it's just, that's an outcome of some sort of probably subconscious practice that you did not deliberately put in place. Sure. I am not saying, you know what? I need to spend more time with this person at work. Sure. That's my thought. Okay. Go ahead. What do you think? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm thinking. I was trying to think of actually the answer to the question, but it, it feels kind of even right now to the well, majority the of my direct reports. Well, That's it. But I wouldn't say the whole team. But is even the goal? To be in touch with my direct reports? Yes. Even? Even time? Even amounts of time? Mm -hmm. Depends on the season. Okay. I'm, if the season's down. Now I'm making the answer to the question because you're just, you <laughs> yeah, just you sure you're are. giving. Look at him. He's, is, he's been wanting to come. He wants to know. <laughs> is that the answer probably, if, if it depends on the season, that's a great answer. It does. Like, so I, then, I'll use an example. Yeah. So we were, uh, we were really having to fine tune our finances. Yes. Recently. You yeah. Know, some tweaks here and there. Absolutely. I love this is going to be, Jared does a mid-year check-in with Ange. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe I started have. off that not. Might have been interesting. I started off not. She just she just went down that boat. On just uh, for the pub, for the world to see, having yeah. to check in with her boss. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Um, okay, so great. So we had finance. Okay, well, with our controller, our main person yes. over finance, oh, yeah. that reports to me. Yes, we are talking. Every day, you know, he's yes. taking lots of my time. And I, that was worthy. I, I've told, yeah, the majority of the team, he knows this and the team knows this. Who's on the phone with? Probably Colton. Yes. You know? Okay, great. Well, we get some uh, rhythm in place. We get some routine in place. And overall now, Colton and I have a set time we meet yep, for 45 minutes great. a week. Great. So I, I would say I am still in touch with him. He still takes up my time on this hour of this day. Um, but, but now... Who am I calling? Dina is a great example. Our sales, our, our sales yep. team is now in the, we're in the trenches with talking yes. more and more and more often with, you know? So I say, I let, my goal is to ha talk with all of them at least once a week if I can. Mm -hmm. Kyle falls, content falls to the wayside. So, well, in this season, especially because they're cranking stuff out. But even now that we're getting to the end of the, you know, what is our year, that's even becoming more and more. So I'm saying it all, it really is pretty routine. Like it depends on the season it's in. Um, but it does also come down to who I would say directly reports to me. Well, I think, I, I, I appreciate you fleshing this out. I mean, you're the elves. Yeah, you're doing a great I job. guess we We're are. workshopping this thing. All we right. Are. So I, I put the toy together a little bit. I handed it over and you're polishing it. And so as you're polishing this toy, I actually like the question even more because... Who, gets your, who is getting your time right now is either going to show, one, an unhealthy balance, and you're going to go, wow, I need to draw some boundaries there. Or you might say, wow, who gets my time? I am really allowing personal bias to it. Like, I, I'm, you know, I am friends with this person at work. I take sure. every lunch with them. I am every hallway meeting. I, you know, I was like, wow. Oh, sure, I am, time spent. Time spent. Sure, yeah. yeah. That's another way to look at it. I was like, wow, I, I need to be cautious of that. I need to be aware of that. Sure. I, I, need to, I, need, I need to be aware of that. I'm not saying that you can't have friends at work. I'm saying yep. that you need to be aware of that if you are a leader, especially if you are in, a, in an authoritative position. Yep. 
So you might see that. But like you, you are actually, sounds like, at a good place. You wouldn't change anything, but it causes you then, it's a mid-year check-in to look at the rest of the year and go, wow, okay, I like this. It is seasonal. You can anticipate the seasons Mm -hmm. and go, this is the person that needs to have my time in this way during this season. And then that's probably going to transition here and transition here especially leadership is about people. And often I think the reason we don't delegate or the reason that we micromanage is because we aren't proactively asking questions like this. Well, like who actually needs, do I need to spend time with? Not who is it like reactive today? Oh, I spent time with this person, spent time with this person. And now I just have to fix it myself. Because like, wow, I'm actually looking ahead at whom I need to spend time with and why. So I think it's a great question because then the last piece of this is your underutilized resources or underdeveloped staff. And I say underdeveloped, not that they um, are not performing well, but it's like, wow, they are a rock star in the waiting. And if I would spend a little more intentional time with them now, maybe it's not needed in this moment, as in, you know, the function of, that you described, our finances, spending time with the controller. Sure. Yeah. But you might even look at growth like, wow, this is an underdeveloped player that if I give a little more time to, um, we could coach up and expose them to leadership thinking, even if it's nothing else. I just think I'm a huge proponent of just mentoring and spending time and something that I am asking myself of like, okay, when, like, cause I end up spending a lot of time alone and, and now I'm at the place, I'm like, that seems like wasted time to me. Like maybe not wasted, but underutilized. So if we're sitting here, like for our world, if we're sitting here saying like, oh, we need more, um, facilitators at higher levels, or we need you to train on like, Okay, well, I go on a lot of events by myself. Now, maybe some events we can't afford to do it. Maybe time-wise we can't. But if I'm doing this mid-year check-in for me, that's an area. Like, who am I not spending time with? Potential facilitators. That's who I'm not spending time with mm-hmm. that we potentially could. Mm-hmm. So it's a way then to ask yourself these questions without having to be super thorough my encouragement to everyone out there is to do a mid-year check-in of some kind. If you are not, um, if you're not doing a mid-year check-in, it's probably because either one, you haven't thought about it, or two, you're just really in the weeds of your daily job. Many of us, we are not yep. doing this, this macro check-in. Of course, we're doing our jobs. We have a micro check-in. We know the numbers. We know the things we're doing. We're, the treadmill is continuing to move forward. But if we don't pause and check in and look at the overall picture, we just stay on the treadmill. Yep. So you could certainly add to these. These are three that are on my brain right now that if you're, if you're asking yourself, how am I doing? I think these three questions will help you. Final thoughts, Lim, what do you think about the questions? Go ahead. We're workshopping it over there. I think they're great. Uh, I'm going to go home and journal about these. Oh, okay. Pray about them. I like that. Um, no, it's seriously, it's good. Okay, excellent. Anj, you like the last question. You want to change it, right? <laughs> no, I- I'm... I, I, You saying I want to change it makes me think I should change it. But I don't think if I just like heard it. Okay. I think uh, the only, you know, if I was going to tweak it, I'm kind of looking for guardrails. Here comes the change. (laughs) Like who gets your time right now? You know, like. This may be a good, this may be Anja's, this may be a good, like really good looking Anja's leadership. I don't want to change it, but if I was going to. (laughs) No, that is an excellent look in my leadership. I am aware enough to know. You know, I wouldn't change anything. But if I was going to change something, yeah. it would be the entire first paragraph. Sh- <laughs> Shelby. I'm all of it. Shelby and Zach used to say all the time, like, Zach used to say, like, it is my goal in life to make something so perfect. Anch has no feedback on it, yeah. like, whatsoever. <laughs> I just don't live in that. I'm like, there is always something. You can always, it doesn't mean you have to, I'm not telling you you have to change it. You do this too, though. You and I both do this. You're like, no, I think it's good. I don't think you've changed anything. These are my notes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you don't you have definitely to change do anything. That. Yeah, that's how you I don't feel. Have to. I'd be like, like it is don't. acceptable as is. That it is, is acceptable as is. That is exactly is. how I feel about your question. That oh, is, it is acceptable as is. Okay, I'll take that. If I were to change it, okay. I'd put a little guardrails on it. Okay, what kind of guardrails? But I think it's a, like maybe time area, like, you know, like who's, when you said, it might be too literal, but when you said who is taking up your time right now, I literally went to today. Like I could only think about. Okay. So like who's taking your time in the last week? who's taking your time in this last month, you know, whatever kind of your intent is for that. that that's just where my brain went. Mm, okay, I like that. Well, then maybe uh, apply it to you. Maybe then who is taking your time? Just leave it open-ended. That's where I would end the question. Who is taking who's your taking time? taking your time, yeah. And then you can interpret like, well, right now, I feel like I'm overwhelmed in this, but that's needed. Or right yep. now, it's this person, and that is 
unhealthy. I kind of like that. Who's taking your time? There you go. See? Told you exactly. We I nailed it. I nailed it, folks. Well, I said she's going to like it. But I also she's gonna said like the it's question, acceptable. And she is, is going to want to <laughs> tinker and change it. But if I'm going to live by uh, what I said, I did say we're in the workshop. So workshop <laughs> it. Don't ask. That's good. Don't ask for feedback if you really don't want it. That's a good leadership lesson. I always tell my husband that. Seriously, don't ask for feedback if you don't want it. People say that all the time. Like, oh, give me feedback. You don't really want it. Yeah. I always want to want to know. I would yeah. say you want to want it. I want to yeah. want it. And I feel, hey, I feel like I'm pretty candid. Oh, no, there are days when I'm like, listen, I'm going to share something with you. And please, yeah. speaking, all, just tell me it's good. Speaking of feedback, <laughs> I heard I someone say, they said, my wife asked me the other day, honey, does this dress make me look fat? He said, no, your, your fat makes you look fat. <laughs> That's awful. That's a real story. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's a real story. Someone really said that? Yes. Wow. Oh, my God. Well, on the next she, episode of Good Leader she, Podcast, she how to get a divorce in one <laughs> simple statement. <laughs> Outside of that, you know, I mean, work on your pseudonyms and be a good leader. 